How in the world was a sailor stranded for four years on an abandoned ship, just 200 meters from shore? It all started back in 2017 when Mohammed Aisha, a Syrian sailor, joined the crew of the MV Amman, a massive container ship owned by Tylo Shipping. A promising young man, Aisha had already been named the ship's first mate, a promotion he would shortly come to regret. On July 2017, the MV Amman pulled into the Egyptian port of Adabiya, and it was selected for random inspection. The Egyptian authorities who boarded the ship discovered that the ship had large amounts of expired safety equipment, posing a risk to the sailors in the case of disaster. To make matters worse, its classification certificates were also expired, meaning the ship hadn't been recently inspected for structural safety. Tylo Shipping had been criminally negligent in maintaining the ship and seeing to the safety and security of the crew, and the Egyptian authorities immediately refused to allow the MV Amman to set sail until the various issues were corrected. The fixes should have been relatively easy, but Tylo Shipping and the Lebanese contractors currently operating the ship had recently run into financial difficulties. This left them without the money to see to the fixes demanded by the Egyptian authorities, which left the ship and its fate in limbo. With the ship on the verge of being abandoned in the port, Egyptian authorities once more boarded the vessel. This time, they brought legal paperwork that needed to be signed, but the ship's captain was already on shore, likely on his way home. That left Mohammed Aisha in charge, and without fully understanding what he was doing, he signed the paperwork required by the Egyptian authorities, hopeful that it would lead to the ship being released, or at the very least the crew getting to go home. It would be a serious mistake on his part. The paperwork that Mohammed had signed made him the legal custodian of the MV Amman and removed the responsibility for the ship from Tylo Shipping or its Lebanese contractors placing it squarely on Mohammed's shoulders. As if things weren't quite bad enough yet, the contractors were now unable to pay for fuel for the ship, which meant the engines could no longer be run to provide electricity for the remaining crew. That meant no plumbing, no lights at night, and no heat or air conditioning. The Egyptian government allowed the rest of the crew to leave the stranded ship, now parked five miles off the shore and held in place by its two anchors. Mohammed, however, was forbidden from leaving the massive ship, and after several months all the rest of the crew had left. It was just him inside a ship larger than a football field, with no electricity and dwindling food. But Mohammed couldn't have predicted just how long he'd remain trapped on that ship. When the food supplies ran out, Mohammed relied on charities to bring him food and help him charge his phone. That let him stay in sporadic contact with his family, and he was even able to use reserve battery power to occasionally contact his brother, a fellow sailor, over the radio, as he sailed past the stranded ship multiple times on his way in and out of the Suez Canal. Tragically, Muhammad would be unable to visit his mother one final time when she passed away in 2018. He wasn't even allowed to go home for her funeral. For Muhammad, this was the lowest point of an already grueling multi-year ordeal, but he'd have another two years to go. Aboard the neglected ship, Muhammad's only company was the occasional guard sent by the Egyptian authorities and scores of rats and insects. The rats scampered through the rusting ship, having free reign of the vessel, now that only a single human remained on board. Muhammad's other companions were swarms of mosquitoes and flies that drifted onto the ship in the wind and only served to make his already bitter life even more miserable. And yet, Muhammad was not allowed to leave the abandoned vessel having been declared legal custodian for the ship and legally responsible for it. Tylo Shipping made a number of appeals to the Egyptian government, who refused to lift the order condemning Muhammad to the ship until somebody took responsibility for the vessel and removed it from its anchorage. Tylo Shipping refused, and Muhammad remained trapped. In March of 2020, Muhammad's luck changed when a massive storm severed the ship's two anchors and set it adrift. The huge container ship drifted on the current and ended up settling on a sandbar just offshore close enough for beach-going tourists to sun themselves while gawking at the massive rusting hulk just a few hundred meters from the breaking waves. This proved to be a huge boon to Muhammad, who was now able to swim to shore in order to receive food and charge his cell phone. He'd have to make the grueling swim every two or three days, but the opportunity allowed him to be around people again, even if briefly, and to get much-needed food and water. Still, though, the Egyptian government refused to allow Muhammad to abandon the ship, and he was forced to swim back after every trip to the shore. Muhammad's extraordinary case was taken up by the International Transport Workers Federation, who immediately began lobbying the Egyptian government and his former employers on his behalf. Finally, after almost four full years, the Egyptian government allowed the ITWF to transfer guardianship of the vessel to one of its own representatives, freeing Muhammad Aisha and letting him fly home at the end of April in 2021. The future of the MV Amman remains unsure, but cases of seafarer abandonment like Muhammad's is actually on the rise, though none are as severe as Muhammad's case. Dozens of other ships all around the world have been officially abandoned by their operators and owners, in some cases leaving crews stranded behind. The crew of the MT Abab was, until February of 2021, 
in a very similar position, though for different reasons. The crew refused to leave the ship after the ship's operator stopped paying the crew's wages 34 months ago. While most of the crew has left, a small band remained behind, refusing to budge. But if they left the abandoned ship, they would not only be breaking maritime law, but would also be forfeiting their only leverage over their former employer, Alco Shipping. The crew's demands were simple. They wanted all of their unpaid wages and refused to budge until they were paid out. As negotiations with Alco Shipping continued over the years, initially a sum of $150,000 was offered to the sailors. This, however, was just over half of what was owed, and the sailors refused to budge. The men lived on their ship with no power, running water, and no food of their own, relying on maritime charities for food and clothing. Finally, 43 months after leaving home, 70% of the crew's wages were paid, and the men were able to leave the ship. Now, go check out Stranded at Sea and Forced to Eat Each Other, true story, or click this other video instead.